16. The Clean Society A very interesting devotional manual of the medieval era is the Book of Hours of Catherine of Cleves, Duchess of Gilders. The date of this collection of miniatures is about the year 1440. The Book of Hours has eight parts, one for each hour of the liturgical day. Our concern being work, our approach to the Book of Hours will be in terms of this interest. The subject matter of the miniature paintings in the book, rich in gold, silver and other colours, is often and commonly described as plebeian. At the same time, there is an obvious delight in luxury, according to John Plummer. These everyday things, that is, workmen, mussels, fish, fields, etc., are transformed into objects of luxury by the way in which they are painted. The artist transforms the ordinary into the precious. The piety promoted by the Book of Hours is a very practical one. Late 57 shows Catherine of Cleves giving alms to three beggars. The text is Luke chapter 11, verse 41, which in the King James Version reads, Give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you, a verse rarely taught in our times. The first half of this sentence stresses giving from the heart. Geldenhuis rendered it, Give for alms those things which are within, that is, giving must have behind it a giving heart. Then, according to Geldenhuis, When a man's inner life is so purified that he acts in this manner, he will be clean together with everything he possesses. He will stand in the right relationship to God without all kinds of ceremonial purification. The same plate, number 57, shows a woman giving a dish of food or water to Christ in prison. Plate number 70 shows Solomon distributing bread to the needy. The scene is based on Proverbs chapter 9, verse 5, in which wisdom invites everyone to share her bread and wine. The banderole above Solomon's head cites Genesis chapter 47, verse 13. And there was no bread in all the land. Another text is John chapter 6, verse 9, on the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. And another is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, identifying the communion bread with the body of Christ. Very clearly, the artist knew the Bible. It is the work of faith and wisdom to minister to others in Christ's name. The Lord will bless such charity, even as he multiplied the loaves and fishes. He will multiply our works of faith. To give to the needs of others is to share with them the communion which is ours in Christ. How faithful Catherine of Cleves and others were, we cannot specifically say. But what is clear is that a high standard of Christian responsibility was taught. We can go further. It can be said that as long as a concept of hierarchy or sacred rule prevailed among Catholics and Protestants, there was a strong adherence to a godly work ethic and a godly charity or sharing with others. On the other hand, elitism undermines responsibility, authority and community. With elitism, charity ceases and welfareism begins. One consequence is a gap between classes and a decline in community. With this in mind, we can look at the entire incident from which our Lord's comment on alms is drawn, Luke chapter 11, verses 37 to 44. And, as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him, and he went in and sat down at meat. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marvelled that he had not first washed before dinner. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also. But rather, give alms of such things as ye have, 
and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Our Lord makes certain very plain statements about the Pharisees and others. First, although it is their calling to be religious leaders, they are not a hierarchy, that is, they do not exercise sacred rule. Rather, they are an elite. As an elite, their goal is supremacy, not service. They love the chief seats, places of prominence, not alms giving from the heart or service to God and man with all their being. Second, those who are an elite are worse than useless. They are the living dead. They are like unseen tombs of men long dead and forgotten. Men walk over them and are not aware of them. An elite thus belongs to the past and is dead. The living, on the contrary, give alms. They work unto the Lord and they share their bounty with men. Third, there is a contrast throughout our Lord's words between the living and the clean and the dead and corrupt. Charity goes out from the living. Nothing from the dead except death. In our day, there is much talk about social responsibility as a good thing, perhaps because there is so little of it. We see, instead, a growing lack of family and personal responsibility in the world around us. In a world in which elitist ideals prevail, responsibility is replaced by egoism and self-promotion. Our Lord equates elitism with death. Let us consider the implications of elitism. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 36 declares that those who sin against God do violence to their own soul, and, in hating God, love death. The culture of death is hostile to responsibility and to work. It prefers instead theft and debt. We can expect, therefore, that theft and debt will become increasingly prevalent in humanistic societies as social policies. In our world today, theft and debt are not social byproducts. They are central aspects of humanistic social policy. Not surprisingly, such a society becomes increasingly anxious, disorderly, and evil. If social policy relies on theft and debt to create a new world, it will create instead hell on earth. Elitism is a divisive concept. If men at the top see themselves as an elite, separate and above men, the prevailing temper in all society will be anti-work and anti-community. All will seek to do their own thing. This is not to say that humanism is indifferent to the need for community. On the contrary, studies of the concepts have been common for more than two centuries. The humanistic version of community is usually coercive, that is, imposed from above by the state. Such a perspective is the antithesis of community. Statism is not community. Moreover, coercion by the state is hostile to the growth of community because it replaces work and charity with theft and debt, and theft and debt are divisive and destructive to society. For example, Proverbs chapter 14 verse 23 tells us, In all labour there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. The latter half of this verse is rendered by the Berkeley version as, Mere talk only leads to want. The society of theft and debt works to hinder the profit of work and to slander it. 
Proverbs chapter 13 verse 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. The Berkeley version of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 26 tells us a blunt fact about man. A worker's appetite works for him, for his mouth urges him on. The elitist denies the realities of God's world and thus creates a welfare state. He uses theft and debt to try to counteract the unhappy fact of need and only aggravates the problem. The difference between the two perspectives, hierarchical and elitist, can be seen in the current views of architecture. It was once held that architecture was an expression of the life and faith of a people. In recent years it has been held that, by altering a society's architecture, one can alter its whole character and outlook. Where God's rule prevails, man's faith is at work to exercise dominion in every sphere of life and thought. Where elitism prevails, elitist man seeks to impose a new creation from above to replace God's handiwork. The Lord God is content to allow man to work towards an understanding of God's plan and then its development in history. Only in terms of God's way can man prosper and flourish. Then, in our Lord's words, And behold, all things are clean unto you. The word clean is in the Greek, katharos, as in the English, catharsis. It means free from impurities, spotless and without blemish. A clean society cannot be built on theft and debt. It requires faith, the clean heart, with the work and charity of faith, to cleanse the man and society and to heal the divisions of man. The clean society is the work of God through man's life and work.